How many feet of lettuce can I grow with my fishes? My goal is to harvest five tons per year in a super intensive system with Pararuku and to feed my community with the help of one of our largest Amazonian fish. The initial stock of four tanks, 15,000 liters, is 90 fish, 0.5 kilograms each, which means 45 kilograms initial stock weight. I will harvest the fish with an average weight of 13.5 kilograms, Peruku feed conversion ratio 1.9 and feed efficiency ratio 53. As I learned in your other videos that the tanks will be stocked after three, six, and nine months. So after one year, I will harvest every three months. Woo! The school of aquaponics. So we've conversed and cleared up a few things about this operation. So in summary, you're gonna have four rearing tanks that's gonna hold 90 fish with a harvest weight of 14 kilograms each, each one with a total weight of uh, 1,260 kilograms um, per harvest. And this is gonna happen every three months or every 12 weeks. The grow out weight is going to be 13.5 kilograms. That is the harvest weight minus the initial stocking weight of the 0.5 kilograms. According to your research, it's gonna take the Piraruku 12 months or one year to achieve that growth required from the initial stocking uh, weight. With the harvest every three months, it's gonna require four tanks. You take the time it takes for it to grow out and you divide it by the harvest interval, which is three months. And that's gonna require four tanks. And the final stocking density that you wanna have in this intensive uh, operation is the total fish biomass divided by the um, amount of water volume in each tank. And your tanks are 15,000 liters, which converts to 15 cubic meters. So we take the 1,260 kilograms of fish weight, fish harvest weight, and we just divide that by the amount of cubic meters that we have, which is gonna break down to 84 kilograms per cubic meter of water volume. Now, this is higher than the standard or the recommended 60 kilograms per cubic meter of water volume. And I know we had a discussion and we talked about adding the aeration and the liquid oxygen, and I'm almost willing to bet the house that if you have this type of stocking density, even with this type of fish, that it's gonna require liquid oxygen. I'm almost can almost guarantee that it's gonna require that unless you have some type of super phenomenal Superman uh, growing skills that you can somehow figure it out. I'm almost certain that it's gonna require liquid oxygen. So we wanna keep that in mind. I will continue doing further research and find out how people are growing um, these type of fish at these stocking densities um, in a recirculating type of system because I'm, I'm certain that it's gonna require liquid oxygen. Unless this fish comes from another solar system outside of the galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, then I'm pretty sure that the water parameter limitation is going to be oxygen if you stock at this density. Um, and we want to keep levels maintained above five parts per million. I mean, there's other fish like tilapia. Tilapia can be raised in three parts per million and two parts per million of oxygen. But for optimal growth, we want to maintain it um, above uh, five milligrams per, per liter. So just double check on that and be certain before you put something like this together. Um, also with your 15,000 liter tanks, make sure that you have six inch freeboard space um, when you uh, purchase these tanks because you don't wanna have just 15,000 liters total and it, the water filled all the way up to the brim because it's gonna, you're gonna lose a lot of water that way, especially during feeding times and during harvest time. So let's keep that in mind as well. Now, the number of harvests that you're gonna have per year broken down more specifically than three months is going to be 4.33 harvest. That's what it's gonna average out to. So this is the number of weeks per year, 52, divided by the number of, uh, or the harvest interval in weeks, which is 12 weeks. The total amount of fish weight that you're going to harvest is 5,456 kilograms. That is the number of harvest, 4.33 times the weight that you're gonna harvest each time, 1,260 kilograms. So that's gonna give us our annual harvest weight per year. Now, the feed conversion ratio, which you have researched, is 1.9. So this basically means we need to put 1.9 pounds of feed in in order to get one pound of weight gain. That's what that breaks down to. So um, in order to figure out our annual feed input, we take our annual weight, the 5,456 kilograms, and multiply that by the feed conversion ratio. When we discussed, or when we talked um, in the other discussion, we had, that this is where um, our calculations were uh, went kind of wrong, and I noticed that when I went back and double-checked. 
So this is where we went kind of wrong. So it's actually more feed than what we thought um, needed to be inputted in the system. So this is going to be the annual feed of 10,366.4 kilograms, uh, which breaks down to about a 53% uh, efficiency for this fish. It's efficient. It, it, it can convert feed at about 53% uh, percent efficiency um, into fish biomass. Now that we have our annual feed input, we can figure out our daily feed input by just taking that number, our annual feed input, and dividing that by the number of days per year, which is 365. And that's going to give us 28.4 kilograms of feed input per day. We convert that into grams by dividing that or excuse me, by multiplying that by 1,000, and that's gonna give us 28,400 grams of feed per day. We convert it into grams because this is gonna help us um, simple, help simplify the following equation. Now we can calculate our required plant production area, uh, the area required to take up that amount of nutrients or amount of fish feed that we put into the system um, in order to cleanse the water or, or, or uh, purify the water in a sense, if you wanna put it that way. And we do this by taking the feed input per day, the 28,400 grams per day, and multiplying that by the UVI scientifically proven feed ratio of 60 to 100 grams per square meter. So we'll select a range um, that falls within 60 to 100 grams. And since we're growing lettuce, it'll be on the lower end of the, uh, of the feed ratio. So we'll select 70, we'll select 70 grams. Not one fish tank to two grow beds, We'll select 70 grams. And I know you know that already because you've been watching other videos. So this is just for other people who might be coming in from the darkness to the bright light. Um, so we'll select 70 grams and we'll multiply them together and that'll give us a total uh, production area of 405.7 square meters of plant production area that we need um, to purify this water. Now we need to determine the plant density. How dense are we gonna plant these lettuce? Um, and this is gonna vary depending on the type of lettuce that you're growing. Some can grow at a higher density like bib lettuce up to 29.3 uh, 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 plants per square meter. And some like butterhead lettuce are gonna grow at about 24.2 plants per square meter. So in this uh, uh, example, we're gonna go ahead and select the butterhead lettuce around 24.2 plants per square meter and from there we can figure out how many plants total since we have the density how many plants total for this operation we take the density of the 24.2 plants per square meter and multiply that by the pl required plant production area the 405.7 and that's going to give us 9817.9 lettuce for for the total production for the total production now we're not gonna use a batching method and just put all these uh, nearly 10,000 lettuce in there at one time. We're gonna use a staggering method and harvest on a weekly basis. So we can have, for instance, a four week grow out period, which means once your seedlings are ready to be transplanted, that means they only need four more weeks extra in order to reach harvest. So we'll use that as an example here of a four week grow out period. Um, so we'll just take our total production, our total plants, um, the 9,817.9, uh, and we'll divide that by four, which is gonna give us 2,454.5 lettuce per week that we'll put in there per week. And each week we'll have that much, um, uh, that many lettuce that are ready to be harvested. Now, this is going to take you a year to achieve. In order to build up to this capacity, this full capacity is going to take one year because uh, it's dependent upon how long your fish are gonna take to reach uh, the maturity that you uh, or the harvest weight that 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 you desired because the first batch of piruruku that you put in there they're going to be small and you cannot there's no way possible that you're going to be able to supply enough nutrients to that to 90 piruruku in that large uh, tank volume to supply 10,000 head of lettuce it's just not happening so you're going to have to uh, increase gradually as the fish grow as the feed input that's what is mainly re, uh, re, uh, re, uh, reliant on is the feed input. As the fish grow, you can feed them more, as, then as you stock more into the next tank, and then the third tank, and then the, finally the fourth tank, and as they all grow out and before you, uh, right before your first harvest, then you'll be at full capacity. Then you'll be at full capacity and you'll have this many uh, lettuce per week, but you'll have to scale up gradually and uh, work your way into the system. So this is the breakdown of what is required for the lettuce production and the Amazonian piruruku. I hope I'm saying that name right too. Woo!